Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us in our Launch into Text virtual conference. I am so excited to be here with you today. So on behalf of the committee, thank you so much. Welcome to Digital Escape Rooms using Google Forms. I am Crystal Ellis. Just a little bit of background about me. I am actually a third grade teacher. I love technology and love teaching teachers technology. I am ISTE certified. I am a Google Certified Educator. I am an ambassador for many tech programs, including Seesaw and Book Creator. I'm what we call the self-taught um, lover of technology. I am also a mom. I have a son named Caden who loves sports. And today's mission, we are going to learn about what a digital escape room is, why we should use one, and how to make a digital escape room. This is going to be a step-by-step -step lesson for all different um, levels of technology. If you're at the beginning level, that's great. We were going to walk you through it, and by the end of it, you're going to be successful and walk away saying, I can do this. I'm going to go ahead and switch my screens real quick. And present. And I'll move my camera up here a little bit. Feels weird down there. All right, so let's move back a little bit here. Okay, so what is Digital Escape Room? They are an interactive way for students to problem solve clues that you have created. Um, you're going to take your unique curriculum, your unique standards, and fit them to what you want your kids to know and show you that they, they know. Um, it promotes higher level thinking skills. Students get instant feedback on their thinking and it is unique to your students and as unique as you make it to your classroom. So before I begin, I just kind of want to throw a lot of things out there. Digital escape rooms are out there everywhere. You've seen them, I'm sure, on Pinterest and TPT and they look so amazing. The first time you create your own digital escape room, don't set yourself up to that level of expectations. Don't make it look, make yourself think that it has to be as amazing and creative with so many clip arts and the creativity piece that the ones that you've seen or bought on TPT are. I've used them, I've loved them, but I also think it's important to use my own curriculum with my digital escape rooms. And so that's how I started this journey for me. And I also, I just want to lay it out there saying it's okay if it's not the top level of what you've seen on Instagram or Pinterest. So how do you get started? By having an end in mind. What is it that you want your kids to know or show you that they know? So in my case, I started this um, journey for me with a math review. I wanted my kids to show me that they were ready for our upcoming math test. And I wanted to find a way for them to review. My kids love Kahoot. They love quizzes, but I feel like they are just racing to get to the high leaderboard and they're not really thinking through the math that I wanted them to practice using. And so that is why I created my very first escape room. And it was amazing to watch the kids work cooperatively and engage their brains and think about math in such a fun, interactive way. So we're gonna go ahead and create one today and I'm going to take you step by step through it and together we're gonna to be successful on how to create a digital escape room. So I'm gonna flip over here to my form. Now the first thing you'd wanna do is open up the form. If you go up here to your URL and put form.new, that will bring up a new form for you. Just a little tech tip for you. Form.new always brings up a new form. So here is my form. I kind of started creating a little bit just to have a guidance as I teach this lesson. The first thing I always do is I title it. My drive has a million things in there. I need to be able to find them again. So I went ahead and titled this one, Example Escape Room. Okay, so it's got a title. Now, from there, I'm an elementary teacher. I have to have color. I have to have it cute and creative. So I go over to my palette here and I customize my theme. Now this is where if you wanted to upload an image of a book you are reading or whatever you're creating, you can always upload images as well. Sometimes I put a class picture on there just because my kids love to see themselves in our forms as well. Um, create it however you want. Upload your image, use one from them, whatever you would like. So I'm going to go ahead and look at my theme options here. And I would like some color. 
So I'm going to put some color into it. We need some color on this rainy day today. So here we are. I have my form ready to go. Okay. Now I'm going to go over here to my settings. Okay. This little gear here is your settings. And there's a few things we need to talk about here. So I would recommend you collecting your email addresses. That way you don't have to have a space for their names and you can hold the kids accountable for who did what. So I would collect their email addresses. Now restricting it to users within your network, that's something that my school district does. So I usually unclick it. It doesn't really matter as long as you stay in your network. Limit to one response. I personally don't care if my kids want to compete and do the escape room six, seven times. In my opinion, they're practicing their math. So I usually don't limit it, but if you're gonna use an escape room for an assessment, you might wanna limit to one response, okay? And if they can edit after responses, that one's not necessary for us. So I'm gonna go over here to presentations next, okay? And at the bottom of the presentation, I'm going to encourage you to write some kind of positive reinforcement message for your class in the confirmation message here at the bottom. Um, build your class up when they successfully complete your escape room. Congratulations, you're awesome, you know your multiplication, or whatever it might be, just to have that positive reinforcement in your, in your escape room, okay? So we're out of there. Just as we're going through our buttons up here, this one is also a preview button. I use that all the time to kind of see what it looks like from the student perspective. I always check my codes to make sure they actually work before I, um, send it out to my kids. So I use that preview all the time. Okay. All right. So a couple other things that we're going to talk about here. I'm going to go ahead and start doing some questions. Okay. So I hit my plus and I add my first question. Okay. So here's my first question. What property explains the relationship between nine times two and two times nine? So I've got my question. Then I'm gonna go over here and make sure it's in short answer. Short answer gives us the response validation that we'll need later on when we have our answers. So we've gotta make sure it's in the short answer, okay? And I would stick to short answer. There's a few other ones that work, but be easy on yourself, start simple, start with short response, short answer. All right, so I've got my short answer. Now I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna hit this button and make it required. I want it to be required. I don't want my kids not to do this work that I put my heart and soul into doing. So make it required, okay? And then I'm gonna go down here to these three dots, these ellipses right here, and I'm gonna go response validation. The response validation is where we're going to put the answer that will unlock the code. So in this case, I want the answer of the commutative property. So I'm gonna pick text contains commutative property, okay? Now we're gonna put sorry try again here. So if they don't get this answer right here, they get the answer of sorry, try again. Now something to think about depending on your grade level and your students, they have to put this code in exactly. If it's capitalized for the C and P, the kids have to capitalize it just like that. So think that through and how your kids are used to it. Spaces, capital letters, all of those, it is case sensitive. So just be careful of what you're putting there, knowing that your kids are gonna have to replicate that exact thing right there, okay? All right, so we're gonna do some more examples because I love examples. So here's one, find the missing link. So here I am teaching area. So I've got my shape. And I've actually made a shape in Google Drawings. I just made a rectangle and gave it some numbers. And so I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you how to insert that. Let me go back there stuff. So I wanna insert it. So I'm gonna go over here to my insert image. And for me, I just have it on my desktop. So I'm gonna click the picture I want and I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And now all of a sudden, my next code here, they're finding the missing length in this picture. Okay, so I have an area of 20 in my rectangle and a side of four. So my kids know that four times five is 20, okay? So that's how they go ahead and sound that one. So I make sure it's in, short answer. And I'm gonna go down here, make sure it's required. I'm gonna go ahead and response validation. Now in this case, I'm still going to do my text because I want it to have a label. So my text contains five inches. Sorry. Try again. Now, I might come up here and I might give them a hint. Hint, don't 
forget your label. And that may remind them that, oh, I'm looking for five inches. Okay, let's go ahead and do another one. This one I wanna show you exactly how you can go to a test, a quiz, a review you've created and bring in that exact problem into your review. So I have an exit ticket for one of my math quizzes here that I'm gonna pull over. I want them to find the area of the shaded figure. So I'm gonna copy that direction and I'm gonna put it right here in my question. Find the area of the shaded figure. My copy didn't work, so I will just type it out the long way. Okay, find the area of the shaded figure. Now I want this figure in my escape room. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a screenshot of that image right there. I'm on a MacBook, so it's Shift Command 4. So I went ahead, took my screenshot right there saved it right to my desktop. So I can go back to my escape room, hit my image, and pull it straight from my desktop. Okay. There it is. And there I go, I have mine. Now, as I keep going, I wanna make sure that this is in short answer. If, it's, if you don't change it, you'll see that you don't have the option for response validation down at the bottom, okay? I'm gonna go ahead, make it required. I'm gonna go to my three dots and response validation. Now in this case, again, I'm looking for a label. So I want text. My text contains. So I've got 28 here, I've got 12 here. So my text contains 40 square centimeters. Now again, if your kids are used to SQ, write it however your kids are used to it. Sorry, try again, okay? I'm gonna do one more. So, and this is just one we'll type in, okay? We're gonna add our plus. And what is the product of five times four? Okay, put this into short answer, make it required, go to my response validation, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do a number because I don't need a label here. So number is equal to 20. Sorry, try again, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the preview and kind of show you what that looks like from a student perspective. So let's hit our preview. We'll let it load here. All right, so you notice my escape room here has got its title. I am collecting my email address. So what property explains the relationship between nine times two and two times nine? I put in my commutative property. The answer here was five inches. Now let me show you what happens if you, I don't get it right. If I just put in five, for example. Oh, there's my sorry, try again. If I don't put in my space, sorry, try again. And then this one was our 28 and our 12 square centimeters, okay? And then what is the product of five and four? We put our 20, okay? So once I have mine, I go ahead and submit it. And I should get the validation code that you guys put in the confirmation message. Congratulations, you rocked this lesson. This is where the kids are gonna see that once they have completed their escape room. Okay, so once you've done all your questions and you're ready to send it, um, I usually go up to my send and I put make a link. I always go up here, click my link. I shorten it just because it's easier. I shorten it and copy it and put it directly in the Google Classroom so they can access it whenever they want to, whether it's from home or from school. And that's how I often share my um, escape rooms. I have a few more examples that I just wanna talk about and share with you. So we're gonna go back to my presentation here and go ahead and hit present. So just some things I've learned along the way that work, okay? So here's an example when it comes up. Um, I think it's important as the educator of eight and nine year olds to still interact with them while they're doing their math. So I often will put in questions where they have to solve the math problem and then like do it on like a whiteboard, like this one they're doing a nine times two. 
and they're writing, they're making the array, and they're writing the multiplication factors, and then they have to circle the factor that represents the number of rows. So that's all the math they're doing. They're doing it on a whiteboard, and then they're gonna bring that whiteboard to me, and I'm gonna be able to have a conversation with them, have them explain what they did, um, if they were, incorrect in any way, I can redirect or reteach right there, and I can meet the children where they're at with the education that they're receiving from ACWAS. So in this case, they do that. Then when they leave me with the correct answer, I give them their secret code that they go back to their computer to put in. In this case, I showed you my secret code for this math problem was factor. Now I call it a secret code so they don't go back and share out with their friends what their secret code was. And it's just a good way to connect with your kids through the escape room process. Um, another thing that I do, often the last problem in the escape room, I make the kids explain their thinking. They have to go and do the math problem. Again, in this case, they're doing it on a whiteboard. And then they have to go to a company that I use for them to record their thinking. Now, Flipgrid is often one they love to record their math thoughts. Um, thinking in because they can add these cute emojis in and it's just a fun interactive way for any kid to do a video. So my kids do the math problem and then they go to their flip grid. They record their thinking and it's so amazing to watch where they connect their language their speaking language and their math knowledge and put it together. It just brings a deeper level of math understanding to the students when they're able to do this. And so usually within there somewhere, I have a code in their Flipgrid. I usually just use their Flipgrid code. Um, and once they get in, they'll say that they'll see that their video code is their actual code to their um, escape room. But it's the making them actually explain their thinking that is just a powerful learning tool. I've also done the same thing in Flipgrid. And, the, and um, Seesaw. And the thing I like about Seesaw is then their parents can see what they're thinking as well. All right, so I have some additional resources for you. So when you create your own, you're starting to be successful, here are some ideas to make it to the next level. Maybe you wanna put in a jigsaw puzzle. They have to put puzzle pieces together to create a message and that's your um, code. There's a link to jigsaw puzzle. Maybe you are making a story and you want a fake phone text. There's a bunch of just different links here and resources to, for you to help you be successful when you're ready to take it to the next level. I also just have some different resources down here to help you. Maybe you wanna map it out in your brain and how you're thinking before you start. Just some different resources to help you do that. On this side, I have shared several different examples of some of the escape rooms I've made just this year and shared with my person, my team my third grade team. And I just think it's always good to have a guide. What did she do? How did she make this? And these are there to help you along the way to kind of see what I did. I also included um, a digital escape room PD that I taught last fall for my school district to share that with you. All right, if you have any questions, if you help, want to help problem solve something through, I am here to help and support you. Um, you can reach me at cellis at kinschools.org. I am also on Twitter at crystal underscore ellis three. Um, I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. This for me was amazing, stepping out of my comfort zone to teach virtually. Um, I wanna thank the person who put this whole conference together. His name is Dan Malt. I want to thank him for all the time and effort he put into this um, virtual conference. And I also have to make a shout out to my dear friend, Natalie Mowbray, who encouraged me to, um, to teach this. And her and I teach 10-minute tech for teachers every Tuesday to our school staff. And we have a Facebook page. And so we encourage you to follow us on Facebook. We put all kinds of tips for teachers, all different content areas, all different grade levels. We're there to help teachers. We are teachers and we are lovers of technology. So we put them all together. I encourage you if you are not comfortable with forms to watch Natalie's session tomorrow um, about two o'clock. She is teaching a lesson on forms. Thank you so much for joining me. We are all in this together. Be well, stay safe. Have a great night. Thank you.